So today I'm going to talk about the Mexican-American War. Before the Mexican-American War started in 1846, there were a lot of pressures uh, from U.S. settlers uh, moving west, uh, people who were interested in occupying not just parts of the United States that were in existence at that time, but other parts of North America. And a lot of this idea came from the concept of manifest destiny, which was a term that basically meant that uh, the U.S. was sort of fated to eventually occupy the entire, uh, as much of the continent as possible, extending all the way to the Pacific Ocean. And this is a famous painting that sort of reflects manifest destiny. You'll see the settlers moving west, the wagon trains, the buffalo herd kind of moving in front of it. Uh, the figure there, the woman represents, you know, destiny. Uh, she's carrying a telegraph line, so this kind of shows the progress of, of America. So uh, in the spirit of Manifest Destiny, uh, there, was, there were some land acquisitions, like for example, uh, there was a lot of agitation over occupying as much of Oregon country as possible, and a lot of uh, settlers up in Oregon country really wanted the border to extend far into British Columbia, uh, far above the 49th parallel, which was what the rest of the border had been set between the Great Lakes and uh, Oregon country. They wanted uh, the latitude to be 54 40 degrees, and that actually became kind of a rallying cry for them, 54-40 or fight. But because neither side really wanted a war, uh, they ended up, the U.S. and Britain ended up agreeing on the 49th parallel as a boundary, and Oregon actually became part of, of the U.S. as a territory in February 1848. Um, Texas was also eventually annexed by the U.S., as we discussed with it um, Mexican War, I'm sorry, is the, with the Texas Revolution, and uh, that happened in 1845. So all of these things really led to the expansion of the U.S. and more settlers moving westward. Now in California, there was a little different story, because California was part of Mexico, and uh, there were a lot of people living there called Californios. Uh, originally under Spain, uh, much of California had been settled by Spanish uh, settlers as part of the mission system, which is uh, represented in this map. But once Mexico got independence from Spain, uh, the mission system started to sort of decline, and a lot of the land uh, that was used to be mission land was divided up and given to Californios, who were uh, settlers from Mexico who agreed to go up and settle in uh, California, and in exchange they were given these ranchos that were uh, pretty large tracts of land where they could uh, engage in ranching, cattle farming, basically. So um, this is what the rancho system looked like in our area. You'll see that the, all of the Palos Verdes Peninsula was one rancho, then you've got Rancho San Pedro, you've got one up at, in Redondo, Rancho Los Cerritos, Los Coyotes, Los Alamitos. You might recognize some of these names from uh, place names that are still around today. But as you can see, these are pretty big tracts of land. So that's what was going on in California. And uh, at the same time, there were Americans who were taking the California Trail and settling up in um, Northern California. And uh, there were a couple of things that sort of led to this dispute, some disputes between the U.S. and Mexico. So number one, there was still a disputed area between Texas and Mexico and that was, ended up being disputed between the U.S. and Mexico once the U.S. annexed Texas. So you have Zachary Taylor, who was a general in the U.S. Army at the time, leading troops uh, down to the Rio Grande, which, was in, uh, which is today the border between Texas and Mexico. But that was the border that the U.S. was claiming, and then the Nueces River was the border that Mexico claimed was the border between the two countries. So that disputed area is where Taylor took his troops, uh, they ended up exchanging gunfire with Mexican troops on the other side of the Rio Grande, and several U.S. soldiers were killed. And when word got back to Congress about this in Washington, of course, there was a lot of outrage and a lot of people calling for war. At the same time, or around the same time, there was a conflict going on between American settlers in California and the Mexican government there. And uh, most of this conflict started out in the town of Sonoma, 
which is just north of San Francisco. And uh, this was an instance where there were a bunch of, there were about 500 Americans living in California and about 12,000 Californios. Uh, but a small group of American settlers seized the town of Sonoma. Uh, this is in 1846 in June. And uh, they started to, they called it the Bear Flag Revolt, and they actually came up with their own flag trying to declare independence for California. And uh, John Fremont, who was in, who was mapping expeditions in the Sierra Nevada mountains uh, when he heard about war with Mexico, went to Sonoma, joined with the American settlers. So there's a little information about Fremont in this paragraph here that you can read if you'd like. And uh, he was trying to help California to get independence, not necessarily make it part of the United States. Uh, this revolt didn't last a super long time. Uh, June is when it started, and then in July you have the U.S. Navy actually coming in to help with the American settlers who felt like they were under siege at that point. And they came to California and brought the American flag with them. And then you also have the U.S. Army coming from the east. And as a result, uh, the U.S. and Mexico ended up fighting over California during the years uh, 1846 and 1847. So then in 1847, this is when the war ended, um, there were lots of battles in California, but uh, most of the fighting actually was taking place at this point in Mexico. And uh, because of that, the U.S. Army continued to advance through Mexico, starting in the north and heading south. And they actually managed to get to Mexico City by September of 1847. And they captured Mexico City. And once the Mexico City was captured, which of course was the capital of Mexico, well, if you're at war and your capital city gets captured, it's not a good thing. So at that point, Mexico basically had to agree to terms um, for surrender. And as a result of the war, you have the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which is the uh, treaty that was signed to officially end the war, even though the fighting ended in 1847. The treaty was signed in February of 1848, so that's the official end of the war. Um, as a result of the treaty, uh, the U.S. was given what's known as the Mexican Cession. And you can see from this map here that uh, the Mexican Cession basically included the entire Southwest, with the exception of a very small strip of land in southern Arizona and New Mexico. And so you have California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, um, and so on, parts of Utah, so parts of Colorado and Wyoming, so huge, huge area. It actually totaled more than 500,000 square miles, and the Mexican Cession increased the size of the U.S. by almost 25 percent. Um, in exchange for this, the United States agreed to pay Mexico $15 million, and uh, so that was, you know, Mexico got something for the land, but not much. And then after that, there was still some interest in getting a little more land from Mexico because there were some people who wanted um, a railroad, which was starting, railroads were starting to be built at this time. They really wanted to make sure that there was a southern railroad um, that would be built entirely on U.S. soil and not going through Mexico. And so in 1853, the U.S. and Mexico agreed to what's known as the Gadsden Purchase. And this was where the U.S. paid Mex Mexico $10 million dollars and the U.S. got the southern parts of modern-day Arizona and New Mexico. So as a result of this whole war and session and the Gadsden Purchase, the U.S. gets a lot bigger, as you can see, but it also uh, acquires a lot of different kind of cultural influences. So people start, Americans start moving into these areas in larger numbers, but their cultures blend with the existing cultures there, which are um, partly Native American, a lot of Mexican culture in this area, um, 
lots of uh, use of Spanish uh, language. So you see a lot of place names that show Hispanic heritage, a lot of place names also showing Native American words, um, places like San Antonio, Santa Barbara would be, of course, Hispanic. And then you have places like Taos and Tezuque, which are Native American. Um, Mexican Americans also taught Anglo settlers about mining in the mountains, helped them with ranching, um, introduced new types of saddles, um, and building materials were very uh, commonly borrowed from Native Americans, such as adobe, which is that kind of clay building material that a lot of buildings were made out of early on, and is still kind of a popular thing today. So anyway, there's a lot of blending as a result. But as you can see, um, the United States was really the country that came out ahead on this one and really absorbed a lot of land and culture as a result of this whole period of time and conflict.